Hi, I'm Chris Cooper. Welcome to The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Thanks for joining us. Fall is just around the corner, so it's time to start thinking about fall and winter lawn care. So Booker is here to give us some tips on what to do and when to do it. And we had a lot of rain this spring and earlier in the summer, but the constant downpours seem to have stopped. So we need to think about irrigation. All of that and more is coming up next on The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. So stay with us. This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Hi, welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Booker T. Lee. Booker is the UT County Director in Tipton County. And Mr. D is here. Thanks for joining me. Glad to be here. Glad to be here, right. too. This is going to be fun. Yep. <laughs> First up, we have a viewer email, and it says, Dear Dr. Cooper, last night there were these worms on my oak tree. What are they? They were concentrated on one small branch, so I just cut it off and threw it away. If there are a lot of them in the future, how do I control them? If you look at the screen, mm -hmm. uh, we have it there. We know what this is, Mr. D, don't we? We do. Yes. This, is a, this is a slide we use to train our master gardeners <laughs> with. And if you look at that slide right there, doesn't that little critter up there in the top corner look familiar? Looks familiar. Mm -hmm. That is a... Uh, Yellow neck caterpillar. Yellow neck caterpillar is what uh, very, it is. Very, very interesting little critter. Uh, they can actually, you know, they're gregarious in nature. That's a big word to <laughs> yeah. mean that they like to stick together. Right. Oh, yeah. And that is a uh, predator, uh, you know, a method to try to prevent predators from feeding on them because they want the predators to think that instead of them being a bunch of little bitty worms, they want the predator to think that they're one worms. large yeah. critter. Mm. <laughs> they Small. have the ability to change from uh, red and yellow to black and yellow, you know, as a camouflage mechanism. Mm -hmm. And uh, But they're they're interesting critters. Uh, they can defoliate. They, yes, can, they, take, can. they can do a lot of yeah, feeding. Yeah, they can definitely they, skeletonize mm -hmm. leaves. Right. They, they, sure they, they sure can. They, they start out making, you know, when they're real little, yeah. they do a little damage, but as they get big, they do a lot <laughs> bigger damage. damage. And especially if you have that many together, I mean, think of the kind of damage that they right. can cause. So how do we control that? There are caterpillar, mm. which means that yes. BT, Bacillus thuringiensis, mm -hmm. will do a good job with them. They have to get some in their stomach. It's mm -hmm. a stomach poison, so they have to actually do a little bit of feeding uh, in order to take the product in. But uh, javelin or dipel yeah. will work mm -hmm. on, on them. Seven, Carboril, Dursban, Conserve, Spintor, Decathlon, Tempo, Tempo SC Ultra, <laughs> yeah. Star, Scimitar, Asilprin, Onyx, Onyx Pro, and Delta Guard will okay. also do the job, okay. and that's out of our red book. Right. There you have it from Mr. D himself. No, the man. All right. Book, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, this is okay. all about lawn care now. I'm so glad. Getting a lot of questions about that now <laughs> yeah. as we go from, you know, the fall to the winter. So first question is this. What's the recommended height to leave my lawn as we get ready for the winter time. I still feel good about this car. I'm, I'm, I got tired of cutting that grass twice a week, and you know, I get that more out there and cut, it twice, looking at cut you. it twice a week. And I, I, I know Mike do the same thing over there. Oh. <laughs> no, he enjoy cutting that grass too. Mm. But yeah, that's that's a good that's a good question. Cause a lot of time, homeowner want to know, it's getting cold now. Should I leave my grass, cut it low, or leave it high? I recommend that you cut it the same height, okay. about two inches to two and a half, two to three, three inches tall. And that is so will protect those root systems during the winter months. Okay. Because if you cut it real low and we have a real cold winter, you can free those root systems out of there and damage your grass in the springtime. So leave about two and a half to three inches tall during the winter months. Okay. And, that'll be, and that's for your warm season warm grass? Warm season grass. Yeah. And, your, and your fescue grass, the cool season grass, you're still cutting it. Okay. You know, it's, it's, a, it's growing during this time of the year. Mm -hmm. So you want to leave it, you want to cut it by the recommended height. And that's probably about three inches tall. Okay. So mm -hmm. you can cut that pretty high. Pretty high, yeah. Okay. Now, the second question is this, should I water my lawn during the winter? Now, actually, right now, you know, mm -hmm. the rain has been cut off for a little bit. Yeah, um, if we go through a real dry spell, right. you know, uh, your, your, your roots are still acting. 
Okay. The top part is what gone away, so you need to make sure that you keep those root system moist. And not like in the summertime now, you don't have to go out there and just <laughs> water like you do in the summertime. Okay. But you need to keep some moist in there, especially if you want to have a hard freeze or something. And go out there and add some water to those system, those root system. If not, we didn't have them rain in a period of time. You know? Okay. And like I said, probably about the end of uh, middle of November, okay. maybe it'll still cut off then. Cause we might get some ice and snow and stuff, and that's really good <laughs> for the for the root system. Okay. But yeah, if we get through a real dry spell, bring that water hole back out and put a little water on that line. Put water on the line. Okay. And when are we go when are we gonna do that? In the morning time? Or in the morning time, time is a good time to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it might get real cold at night. You don't want it to freeze on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Is the fall a good time to add lime lime to my lawn? That's the best time. Best time. Because we take probably about six six months to see a different reading in your on your lime once you add lime to your to your soil. And based on the soil test now, mm -hmm. don't go out and just start adding <laughs> lime to your, to your soil because you can't get that pH too high. Sure. You want between 6.0 and 6.5 for most of your lawn grasses. So do a soil test. All do right. the soil test now. All right. If you if recommend that you need lime to it, the fall is one of the months, it's the ideal time to do that because you'll get a lot of rain, I hope, and get some rain and wash it down to the soil where, where it needed. And it'll raise that soil pH up to what it needs. And you tell, tell you how much to put down to get it to where you want to need it at. So we do have a soil box mm -hmm. at our office. I know you have some at your we office do. there. We do. Then come out and pick one up and everything and, and do that soil test now. It costs $7 and that's a well spent $7. Yeah. But fall is the ideal time to add lime to your, to your lawn, also to your, uh, your vegetable garden too. Okay. You and let me ask you this, then how often do we need to uh, test our soils? Probably about the pH remain the same, pr about three years. About, about three every years. three years you want to do a soil test. And that tell you most you like your phosphate and your potassium too in the soil. Mm -hmm. Nitrogen, they don't hardly give you a recommendation on nitrogen fertilizer because nitrogen is just kind of mobile in the soil. Right. It don't stay there too long. Once you put it, it nitrogen do one well, two things to a plant really in most. Turn it green and make it grow. Make it grow. And you don't want you don't want your grass to start growing <laughs> in October. Right, not your warm season <laughs> grass. Yeah, you know, in there. So do that soil test and um, and uh, most times you don't need to add a whole lot of lime. You just tell you on the thing when you get back. Oh, that's real specific. Miss yeah. Davis is going to make sure she gives you, uh, you know, yeah. the right recommendation. If you do it right now, it probably somewhere to take probably close to about a week to get the results back. Yeah. You know, and then go go do that. All right. Mm -hmm. If it's too high, they'll tell you what to add to it. Sure. Add sulfur some to it. They'll tell you what to add to it to bring it back down to the recommended recommended height. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's good. That's good. Yeah. It's real good. Mm -hmm. uh, when is the best time to plant fescue seeds? Uh, fescue, now, fescue, that's a cool season grass. Cool season grass. You know, it, 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 it grows during the, during the cooler part of the year. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and a lot of people do have fescue grass. And you normally plant fescue where you got a lot of trees or something in there and, and stuff in there. The fall is the ideal time to plant fescue grass. Okay. You want to do it uh, while the, you want to do it before the soil is freezing. Okay. You don't want you want to do it then. And uh, you want to spread it spread out even over your soil. If you got anything out there, you need to move it out, out of debris and stuff out there. Because you want, you want a good soil foundation okay. to, to, to come on to grow on so remove all the debris out of there and then uh tear the soil up and we'll work <laughs> it up real good and get you a good uh, uh soil bed and then plant the fescue seed okay mm -hmm. now is the fescue seed readily available you can, you you can find yeah, uh, you can find fescue seed yeah okay. easy, easy to find you know and there's a lot of blend of fescue that you can go there just uh look in there and then when you go to the nursery or harvest store tell you want to blend the fescue seed okay. uh, and i uh, and go and sow it out there. There are a lot of fescue uh, lawns out there these days. You, you see, know, people see want green more grass more. year round. I don't. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Like I, I cut it twice a week, <laughs> but I want to. I want to relax, Mike, and I want to relax <laughs> sometimes and let it let let it take care of so let it rest. Sure. I like for the soil to rest sometimes. Yeah, some people overseed the rye grass, some kind of perennial rye grass to overseed yeah, the, the, the grass, keep it going. Yeah, but I I like a man to rest. <laughs> All right. I hear you. Now, here's mm -hmm. another question: How late can I apply my broadleaf herbicide to my lawn? One thing about broadleaf, you want to make sure that uh, you read the label on there and, and, and watch for the temperature. You know, because there might be a temperature rec recommendation on there. Mm -hmm. So you want to do it. Uh, long the grass is actually growing that end, and the weed after growing, you can apply broadleaf herbicide. Okay. But uh, then, then you want to stop then and start broadleaf and look at you uh, putting up putting a pre emerge down. You know, to prevent the weed from germinating. You know, yeah. uh, those the winter weeds. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. And the fall is the ideal time to start doing that. Mm -hmm. you no. Know, and no, just when, most pre-emerge come granulite, and you need to activate into the soil through rainwater or irrigation. 
So um, yeah, put you a premier down there and uh, stop on your broad leaf and put you a premier down there to prevent those weeds from germinating. Yes. You want to do it in the fall of the year, it might come back again early in the spring of the year and put you another one down and, uh, and that help to keep those weeds from germinating. Then you start seeing that pretty line that come through there and everything. So, then you have a lawn like Booker. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> yeah, Booker. <laughs> it, 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 it looked okay this year. I didn't get the yard of the, I didn't get the yard of the month this time, but I, but I need to start watering my grass more. I need to start watering it, period. And then, so my, I know Mike water his lung all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps it looking good. So we're going to have to help Booker out so he can get his uh, lawn of the month. Yeah, right, thanks yeah. for that good information, Booker. <laughs> okay. There are a number of garden events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. All right, Mr. D. Irrigation. All right, now just in case, you know, Mother Nature cuts off the rain supply, we still need to water our annuals and perennials and our lawn, mm -hmm. according to Booker. How do we go about That's doing right. that? That's right. You guys have done a pretty good job of covering it. And, and uh, let me set the record straight okay. about my lawn. Here if we my, go. If my lawn, can, my lawn is tough. Tough, okay. And if it can't survive without a drink of water, it doesn't make it. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't water my lawn. If I can't eat it, uh, now my wife waters flowers, you know, if they're pretty. You know, if they're we pretty. We will water flowers. But as far as the lawn is concerned, I have a lot of trees, and I'd be watering the trees. I wouldn't be watering the lawn. Uh, yeah. But uh, you're you're right. Irrigation is uh, is something that I tell you. If you drive around out in farm country, there are more irrigation rigs out there now yeah. than I've ever seen. There's mm -hmm. been a lot put in this year. Fortunately, a lot of them were not didn't have to be used this year. Uh, but some of them are running now, mm. uh, especially short for soybeans and and things like that. And I, I know. Uh, uh, out at Agri Center, we only ran our irrigation system, I think, three times on our crops, uh, twice in July and then once last week, right. you know, the last couple of weeks. Um, uh, the rice is different, you know, we yeah. water the rice yeah. all the time. But, uh, you know, if you need three, three quarters of an inch uh, to an inch of water a week, and if mm -hmm. you don't get that and you have the capability to provide it, then that's, that's a, a, a good mm -hmm. idea, a good thing to do. But you know uh, what, somebody's going to ask, so how do you measure that, though? With a rain gauge. Okay, there you with go. With a rain gauge. Put a rain gauge out there if you use a sprinkler. Uh, if you use drip, mm -hmm. then you know what the emitter gallons per hour right. the emitters are, and, mm -hmm. and, you, and you can measure it that way. But if you have a sprinkler, use a rain gauge. Mm -hmm. It's very simple, very simple. Mm -hmm. Most people <laughs> that don't use a rain gauge don't put enough water out. They think they're putting enough yeah. water out. A half inch of water is a lot of oh, water. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's going to do some running and it's going to spread out. Yeah. And and a half inch, you, you know, usually is not enough mm -hmm. once a week. Yeah. <laughs> now maybe twice a week, a half mm -hmm. inch it's is okay. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to water every day because you'll encourage shallow root development, and, and mm -hmm. you know you don't want that to happen. You want to wet when you do water. Go ahead go and down deep wet down. soil. So yeah, especially for the lungs. For the lungs, yeah, yeah, always... yeah, yeah. If it start running off, you want to stop for a while in the mic and just let it then start back mm -hmm. and let it soak into the soil. You want to get that inch of water down there. Uh, if not, the roots will start coming to the top and then and the sun gonna scotch them. Okay. I done seen it happen a lot of time. Okay. You know, people go out in the evening time with a few minutes, <laughs> go back yeah. in the house and they think there's that brown spot. Yep. And I know you mentioned early in the morning is a good time to yeah. water and you know the Plants are traditionally are usually wet in the morning anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. due to we'll due do. heavy dews yeah. that we have, and so that is a good time to water. And, and then when it would normally be drying off, the plants would normally be drying off. You know, that, that, yeah. that is also very good. But uh, October is normally our driest month, which is well, good for farmers okay. because that's when they're harvesting the crops, right, and, right, and they yeah. want that. You know, they need that uh, for the harvest. But it, it just uh, so in a landscape situation, just remember that. You know, October is normally our driest month, yeah. and, and so you may, you know, be on alert. You, you may have to mm -hmm. still do some watering, and because, like you said, even though the tops yeah. may not be actively growing, the root system in the fall it, it is storing up energy for the winter, and mm -hmm. and uh, the roots are, are still growing. Mm -hmm. Now, what about uh, what about the different types of irrigation systems? Do you like one better than the other, like drip? 
I like the drip uh, systems, uh, you know, soaker hoses, soaker those hoses, kind of things, right. because it doesn't get the foliage wet. Mm -hmm. And anything that gets the foliage wet, you know, you increase yeah. the chances of disease. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, you have more evaporation. So, so you know, the, the drip systems are more efficient. Yeah. You don't lose quite as much to evaporation. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are several of them out there. That you can get the T-tapes or the <laughs> soaker hoses, or you can get emitters that yeah. you attach to a solid hose yeah, with spaghetti <laughs> tubes and I mean there's a lot of different systems out there um, but uh, I like the drip system it uses less water mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess too the thing about the drip systems is this you need to test them though to make sure they're putting out the right amount from time you to do. time right? you do some of them have uh, requirements that you, you need to be sure that you read you know, <laughs> do a little study I know the first time I hooked a, a T-tape up to my water hose when I was going to water some tomatoes, I turned it on and it blew the hose up. And then I started doing a little research and you had to have, you couldn't stand pressure over 10 PSI. Oh, yeah. So I had to get a 10 PSI pressure regulator and put it on the end of my faucet. And then I could attach it to the end of the pressure regulator and, okay. and that did the trick. But, uh, you know, it's little things like that yeah. that, that yeah. Uh, you know, uh, School of Hard Knocks is, is pretty expensive. You That's know? why I get to read the label all the time make sure that you That's just what, want to do anything. Read the label. Read yeah, the label. Yeah, read the label and, 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 and as hard as it is, read the instructions. Yeah, they got the label for know, something. The yeah, they didn't, they didn't make it for no reason. You know? <laughs> it's really hard to do. So it's on there for something. So make sure you read that label, and especially when putting chemicals out, pesticide, anything like sure. that, read the label. Sure. Read and heed. Now let me ask you this about evaporation. So... Yeah, we're going to be irrigating in the fall. Is it that much evaporation happening in the fall as there is in the summertime? You know, probably not quite as mm -hmm. much, but still a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, the the sun is not as high overhead, yeah. and you know, it's it's uh, you know probably not quite as much. Mm -hmm. But but if you're watering early in the morning and 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 you know you're doing everything else right, uh, not a whole lot of difference. Mm -hmm. but, okay. And when we say early in the morning, Booker, what, what time are we talking about? Well, if is you go, there a time? Yeah, the time early in the morning. A time, block of you know, time? If you can, you, know, you can get out there and set your water hose at night or something at yeah. night. And early morning, probably around like 5, 30, 6 o'clock, you got to turn it on then. And while you're getting ready to go to work and, go there and, 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 and let it run until you get that inch of water down right. there, then go ahead and cut it off. Early in the morning, the idea is a good time. Early in the morning, you know, 5 or 6, 7 o'clock. Okay. You don't want to go around even, 10. Even 3 or 4. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have to walk in there. Yeah, might that's right. Exercise. I'd be walking sometimes, though, at 4 or 4, 4.30. So mm -hmm. I've been doing the walking. So, yeah, you can set the water there. You set the water. Yeah, <laughs> you got a timer. I don't, I don't water my lawn. Like Mike said, my, my grass is kind of tough. And, you know, it, it goes, it'll look kind of bad in the summertime. But uh, once we get a rainfall, it'll bounce back. Because mm -hmm. once you start watering, I think you're going to need to keep that up a lot of times. Yeah. Because you get used to that water. So, and then I roots will start doing that. So, but, uh. But if you want, you want water, water correctly, stuff. Make sure you do it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Deeply, okay. but infrequently. Yeah, that's, that's what right. I always tell people. All right. Thank you, Mr. D. Now here's our Q and A session. Here's our first question. Someone told me that I had sawfly larvae on my pin oak leaves. They have literally eaten away the leaves, and they will do that. How can I control them, Mr. D? And somebody's probably thinking, hmm, I could probably use BT, couldn't I? No, you know, no, you can't. You know, some sawflies look like caterpillars. They do. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the introduced pine sawfly right there, and this is off of our master gardener training uh, 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 activity that we have. But that's an introduced pine sawfly. Mm -hmm. Sawflies are in the insect order Hymenoptera. Mm -hmm. Caterpillars are in the insect order Lepidoptera. Right. Okay. So they're in totally different insect order. Uh, some sawflies are easy to identify. They're not, uh, they don't look at all like a caterpillar. And that's an example of the pin oak soft, mm -hmm. sawfly. Mm -hmm. uh, but insect order Hymenoptera is the uh, insect order that wasps mm -hmm. and bees are in. And uh, the uh, adult uh, sawfly looks a little bit like a, uh, a bee. Yeah, it sure does. I'll show you right there. That's the the adult yeah. sawfly. Looks more like mm -hmm. a bee than it does a, a moth or a butterfly. Mm -hmm. For that reason, uh, lep, uh, BT yeah. Bacillus thuringiensis will not work. It's not working. And so you do need to go with a uh, a uh, harder, stronger insecticide. Mm -hmm. And I've got some listed here. If I can find them. <laughs> there we are. Uh, 
seven carbaryl, dersban, orthene, malathion, diazinon, merit, marathon, yeah, yeah. those are some systemics, Stem, yeah. discus, conserve SC, spintor, electus SC, onyx, onyx pro, delta guard, scimitar oh, are right. all uh, insecticides that'll take out the, the soft flies. Okay. Yeah. Take out mm -hmm. the soft flies, so no BT. No BT won't no do BT. that. No mm -hmm. right. BT. All right, so there you have it. Got to be able to identify your problem. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Get you know, that's what we always try thing. to tell people. Yeah. Identify mm -hmm. before you go yeah. to start spraying. That's right. You know what kind of insect you have out there. All right, here's our second question, uh, which is a good one because I've seen this too. Uh, I was headed to Nashville mm -hmm. on 40 and noticed some of the trees had webs on the ends of the branches. Why is that? Booker, what do you think that is? Probably fall wet one fall that was causing it. Yeah, you see that a lot of time in the fall of the year. And I think you see one on a lot of pecan trees and, and uh, oak trees. You see those a lot of times. Yeah, they like yeah. pecans. They like pecans. Like, like yeah. persimmons. Yeah, mm -hmm. persimmons. Yeah. Right. And everything. And so. Nut trees, hickories, mm -hmm. and walnuts. All over that one. Mm -hmm. You see them all up in the top of the tree and you everything. And when you're driving down the interstate, and, and I, I see why she's on, on Interstate 40. Mm -hmm. You see them a lot of times looking out there. You know, and they're, they're called the fall webworm, but they're three generations per year, and we usually start seeing them in June. But personally, huh. I think the wet summer that we had probably drowned them. Oh, yeah. You know, it drowned <laughs> the first two generations. We didn't see a whole lot of them earlier. Sure did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but now you can see them. I saw a tree earlier this week that was just completely covered with them. Mm -hmm. And you'll, you'll see. You know, yeah, I've, I've you know, been seeing it around the landscape, too. Yeah, you've seen a lot of times. Yeah. So how do we go about controlling, especially if, the, the, you know, some of these trees are large trees, you know, that we're talking about. So keep in mind, they're probably not going to kill the tree. Okay. They, are, they are defoliating the tree during the time when it's important that it keep its leaves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because trees need to keep their leaves until frost knocks them off because they are storing up energy this year for next, for next year. year. Mm -hmm. Right. And if they're defoliated late in the year, that creates problems. That's why hurricanes are so bad, you know, with pecan groves, because mm -hmm. it defoliates the trees late in the year, and it takes years for them to recover. recover yeah. But if it's a small plant, small specimen plant that you can spray, right. or, or you've got those in sprayer, it is a caterpillar. Okay. Now, fall webworm is a caterpillar in the insect order Lepidoptera. And you can use BT. Right, we can. Bacillus okay. thuringiensis. And that's either beat a dipel, javelin, or a couple of trade names that it's sold under. But then all of the other insecticides <laughs> I mentioned will also kill the tree. Yeah. So if you happen to have fall webworms and a few uh, 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 soft flies on the tree, uh, you know, on the plant too, then you may want to go with something hotter. But uh, if you've got fall webworms, the only thing you have, I'd go with BT. Mm -hmm. Okay. And another thing is this: what about uh, natural? Mm -hmm. You know, enemies. I mean, you, can you open the web up and let the birds? You can do that if you in? can reach them. If you can yeah, you just tear can the web them. open, that web is a protective, you know, mechanism. And if you mm -hmm. can open that up, tear it open, let the critters get to them. They they like yeah, to eat them. Like birds uh, probably get some of them out there. They can mm -hmm. yeah, do what now? Yeah. Maybe the birds can get some out of yeah. 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 the birds yeah. out. The birds One thing you don't out. do, I've seen this done before. You don't take a bamboo pole and put a rag around it, dip in gas, set it on fire. Do not do that. I've seen that happen. You're liable to catch your house on fire, and your and your damages are tree. I mean, right, fire sure. burns your tree and it scorch it and creates problems. So yeah, so don't, don't do that. Do that. No do not fire. Do that. No fire. <laughs> All right, we have time for this question here. It's, uh, the leaves of my pen oak look like they've been fried starting from the ends to the middle. Yeah. What gives? Yeah, that's tough. Bacterial one. leaf scorch. scorch. Yeah. Is what that yeah. is because it does look like the leaf has been uh, burned off uh, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much. Yeah. Um, that's been a problem. How, how long, do you remember the first call we started getting on that? It's been 10 or 15 years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was definitely before, before yeah. I started working. Yeah, they, they sent, and they yeah. sent a little publication out of it. There's really nothing you right. can do for this. It's really it's not. no it's, cure. No cure, yeah. It's, it's bacterial leaf scorch, mm -hmm. so the fungicides don't work on it. Right. And, uh, you know, it's kind of related to fire blight, you know, that type of yeah. problem. Mm -hmm. And so fungicides don't work. And... Um, it, uh, and it, yeah, the, the leaf hopper, you know. Spread by a leaf hopper, you know, those sap suckers mm -hmm. again are, you know, that's <laughs> same suckers. type of critter that spreads Pierce's disease yeah. and, and, and phony peach and those kind of things. And, and, uh, uh, and you can't kill all of the leaf hoppers. Yeah, nice and, uh, Just can't. So it's a tough situation. Fortunately, it doesn't, the, tr the trees, it doesn't kill them overnight and, yeah, and, and you know that snow. stresses them it stresses the trees but they are able to survive they they brown earlier in the fall mm -hmm. you know and and uh, it affects uh, several of the oaks sure I, but, I, I, I guess a, a, a older tree will survive longer than a small young tree would if you get on there with because I guess the younger tree couldn't probably take it 
Probably. Probably. So I'm just saying Probably. that, you know, I don't know. Yeah, but the mm -hmm. thing about it is, you know, see, the bacterium actually plugs the xylem layer. So, of course, you know, the xylem is responsible for, you know, mm -hmm. transporting water from the roots mm -hmm. to the leaves. Mm -hmm. So if that doesn't happen, leaves die. Damn. And that's what you, you, the outer leaf margin burn back, that, yep, you that's know, what it is. that's what happens to your house plants yeah. when you don't give them enough water. water. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. Thank y'all for that good information. Thanks. Thank all you. All right. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, you can watch past episodes of The Family Plot online. Just go to WKNO.org and click on KNO Tonight. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next time for The Family Plot. Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe. Production funding for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.